is salt, causing you hypertension, also known as high blood pressure. We've been told all of our lives that we need to limit our sodium in order to optimize our blood pressure, but is that actually true? Rest assured that everything you've been told about this topic by mainstream medicine is a lie. After reading Dr. James Nicolantonio's book, The Salt Fix, I was inspired to make a video on this topic. Afterwards, I've read over 25 research papers to determine for myself what the truth is. Given that in the world, 31% of adults have hypertension and about half of adults in America have hypertension, we need the truth more than ever. For reference, before we begin, the standard government guideline on our sodium intake is that we should consume no more than 2300 milligrams per day. You are considered hypertensive if your blood pressure is 140 over 90 or greater. Between 140 over 90 and 120 over 80 is prehypertension, and you have a normal or normotensive blood pressure if it is less than 120 over 80. The first number is called your systolic blood pressure, that's your blood pressure when your heart beats, and the second number is your diastolic blood pressure, that is the pressure of the blood when your heart is resting between beats. So if somebody's blood pressure is 120 over 80, his systolic blood pressure is 120, and his diastolic blood pressure is 80. With that out of the way, let me tell you what I've learned about sodium and high blood pressure. If salt is a major cause of hypertension, we should expect to see high salt consumption raise blood pressure significantly in the majority of the population. However, this is not at all what we see when we look at interventional studies. In a 1993 study with 163 participants with normal blood pressure, they were given either a low sodium diet of 460 milligrams of sodium per day, or a high sodium diet of 6,900 milligrams of sodium per day. The researchers found that only 18% of participants increased their overall blood pressure by more than 5 units. 66% of them did not experience a change greater than 5 units and 15% had their blood pressure lower more than 5 units when they were on the high salt diet. In other words, 18% were sodium sensitive, 66% were sodium resistant, and 15% were counter regulators. That's right, increasing your salt may actually lower your blood pressure. There are at least 6 other studies I could mention that also show that different people respond differently to sodium intake. It's clear that the majority of the population does not suffer much of an impact from salt on their blood pressure. Because, however, research shows that hypertensives are more likely to experience a greater change in their blood pressure, something pathological is probably allowing salt to affect them more. The problem is not with salt itself. Let's now turn to meta-analyses. A recent meta-analysis from 2021 examined 85 trials that studied the effect that sodium had on blood pressure. They found that, on average, people without hypertension who reduced their sodium intake from 6 grams to 2 grams per day lowered their blood pressure by 4 over 1.7. Hypertensives reduced their blood pressure by 10.3 over 5.1. What should we conclude from this? For the people with normal blood pressure, Nothing much happens to their blood pressure when they change their salt intake. It only changes by 4 over 1.7. For hypertensives, a reduction of 10.3 over 5.1 may sound like a lot, but it really doesn't solve the problem. If someone is at 155 over 95, and they drop down to 145 over 90, they still have hypertension. A different meta-analysis by Grodel and colleagues in 2019 found that in those above 131 over 78, salt restriction reduced their blood pressure by 7.7 over 3, while in those at or below 131 over 78, only reduced their blood pressure by 1.5 over 0.1. So even less happens to blood pressure if we look at that meta-analysis. Regardless, if that is all that lowering salt does, can we really say that salt is the cause of high blood pressure, something else must be going on. 
we'll now look at the famous intersalt study. This study took 200 people each from 52 population centers spread across 32 countries. They analyzed participants' blood pressure and sodium levels. Looking at the 52 centers, they found a positive correlation between sodium and blood pressure. However, when they excluded the four extremely low salt consuming centers, including the Yano Mamo Indians of Brazil, they found that across the 48 remaining centers, there was a negative correlation between sodium and blood pressure and between sodium and hypertension. In other words, as sodium declines, and so does blood pressure and hypertension if we're looking across different populations. A recent paper from 2021 found an interesting relationship between sodium intake, life expectancy, and all-cause mortality. They looked at data from 181 countries and found that there was a positive correlation between sodium intake and healthy life expectancy. The study also found that there was a negative relationship between sodium intake and all-cause mortality. These associations held up to about 45 grams of sodium per day, after which the association started to taper off. In other words, increasing your sodium up to about 5 grams of sodium per day will increase your life expectancy and decrease your risk of death from any cause, on average. The study noted that the low sodium guidelines of the American Heart Association, the World Health Organization, and the European Society of Cardiology are associated with rather low life expectancy and high mortality. In support of this, one may quote a review from O'Donnell and colleagues from 2020, which stated that a specific low sodium intake target, for example, less than 2.3 grams per day for individuals may be unfeasible of uncertain effect on other dietary factors and of unproven effectiveness in reducing cardiovascular disease. Despite a decrease in blood pressure, a low salt diet is responsible for negative cardiovascular outcomes. The explanation for this is that low sodium increases renin, aldosterone, noradrenaline, angiotensin, cholesterol, and triglycerides, and resting heart rate. All this takes a toll on the body over time, increasing the risk of heart attack and cardiac death. If we keep our sodium consumption above 300 milligrams per day, however, the emergency measures our body uses to maintain blood volume would not be used too much. We've now seen that salt is not the cause of high blood pressure. If it's not salt, however, what is it? The real cause may be insulin resistance. Insulin is the hormone your body uses to tell your cells to take up glucose that's in the blood. Insulin resistance is defined as the inability of insulin to increase cellular glucose uptake and utilization. A meta-analysis from 2017 found that those with the highest insulin resistance had a 43% increased risk of having hypertension. This makes sense because insulin resistance has been shown to promote the retention of sodium when your body would otherwise excrete it, activate the renin-angiotensin hormone system, which we've mentioned earlier, enhance sympathetic nervous system activity, the flight or flight response, and increase the narrowing of the blood vessels. Interventional studies show that a diet high in sucrose or fructose, which break down into glucose, increases blood pressure. A meta-analysis showed that a diet high in sugar, as compared with a low sugar diet, for just a few weeks causes an increase in blood pressure of approximately 7.6 over 6.1. There's reason to believe that excess linoleic acid consumption, something high in seed oils, may be part of the root cause of insulin resistance, but that is beyond the scope of this video. I hope you can see now that sodium is not the real reason for high blood pressure. Many people see little to no increase in blood pressure after eating high salt. Meta-analyses reveal that there isn't much effect on average. A study of populations across the world reveals a slight negative correlation between hypertension and sodium consumption, and high salt intake is linked to higher life expectancy and lower all-cause mortality. 
the medical establishment has been pushing the lie of salt causing high blood pressure for far too long. The evidence for it was never there. All of human history contradicts it. But the worldwide annual revenue for antihypertensive drugs is over $25 billion. So we really shouldn't be surprised. If you thought this video was valuable and you would like to support me, please smash that like button, comment, subscribe, and feel free to drop me a donation at my Buy Me A Coffee link mentioned in the description. The more you help my channel, the more we can help the world become healthier. Make the healthy choice, especially when you don't feel like it.